Welcome to week four of Art Therapy with Watercolor. So thanks again to Nami and Ray Parity for sponsoring this project. Um, anyway, we're going to need for today's projects, a flat brush, a round brush, a small brown brush, some table salt and um, a thick, a piece of thick um, paper. So here I use, I, if you can see, I rip it. So I will show how to rip. But this is a piece of um, uh, advertisement flyer that I rip apart and using the rip edges for uh, setting boundaries in our painting. Uh, a great way of setting boundary is also putting masking tape. So this is the space that you're painting only. So it's kind of like contain and limit so that you can feel accomplished in a small piece. Um, here are some of the projects that I will be demonstrating. So using the rib pages that you're creating these mountains. So it will be demonstrated in there to show you how to do it. But it's cool that we, um, so this one I have three different, but um, you can use different color combination to create um, boundaries. So hopefully uh, you can practice and learn how to create boundary in your artwork as well as in your life. Enjoy. Okay, when you have the piece of um, um, cardboard paper, a uh, thin like um, this I use from, uh, I rip it from a cover of a paper pad. So see how I rip it. So I'll show you how to rip it. And I can use it, both of this. So this one is a flyer from Subaru and it's thick enough. So you want, you can use a scissor, but I like it when you rip it naturally. And I'll show you. So you do want to have at least two or three of this strip um, because when you paint, you want to use the dry pieces. So I'll put that aside and let me show you how to use this. So um, this week we're going to learn how to use um, boundary. So using this edges to create clear boundary, but then you can create um, uh, images with it. Um, so today we're going to use the one inch flat brush. So I have um, some uh, <clears throat> dirty water from previously. So you can see, so I'll use this and then wet the top one third of the paper. I'm putting it sideways like this. So then later on, you put this on, it's easy. Okay, so dry my, clean my brush. Mostly I will use this brush. And then I'll pick up some blue right here on the edge and I'm gonna hold it flat like that and move back and forth. So the paper is already wet, a little bit more dark blue or purple. Okay, so I'm just tapping back and forth. Okay, make sure. Let's get some light blue in there. In my brush. The thing is that I don't want a straight edge of the watermark around. So I'm going to use the paper towel and just tap it along there. So what it does is that it's drying the paper for me, but it's <clears throat> kind of, um, you know, uh, take away the, the, um, the edge there. Okay, so we're gonna use this one. This, because it's longer than the paper I'm painting, so I can like kind of eyeing it. I can tilt it this way. You know, I want to overlap this line a little bit. Okay, make sure that it dry. So I think I'll do it like that. Okay, so I hold this down flat, flat like this and using this flat brush. 
um, damp and put some paper, some water into that. And first I'm going to pick up the dark and sienna brown, real dark. So I'll just hold it and from the edge, just pull it down. Okay, a uh, little black, a little blue in there. A little green. Okay, clean my brush, lift up. Uh oh, okay, don't worry about that. We're going to fix that. But first, you want to scrub this edge right here. You don't want it, a harsh edge like that. So wipe off. that look like a volcano. Okay, so I want to dab this off. Okay, also using the paper towel, I'm dabbing. The excess, okay. And then I'm gonna use the round brush with clean water. So scrub on there a little bit, scrub it up and then using my paper towel to lift up. Okay, so we'll go back and then fix that later. Okay, make sure the first layer is dry. So I'm going to use one of this um, paper, this is dry, um, to go for the next layer. So I'm gonna put it down like that. And again, using my flat brush, white clean. And I'm gonna use like dark green and light green. One end, maybe a little brown in there. And purple, some blue. Okay, pull it down a little bit. There we go, and lift up. Okay, so put that aside and again, scrub. So just, let me see that right there. So when you do that, okay, I want to kind of pull this green down a little bit. Mixing it, okay. So, while waiting for this part to dry, I'm going to use the round brush, the medium brush, to kind of pick up slightly, very, um, and make this into a, like a, a lake. So we go, just go back and forth. A little dark blue, a little bit. Not too much. There we go. Okay, probably a little bit over here too. You don't want to. You want the image to look complete, not like white, empty space. Okay, so now that this is fairly dry. So you look sideways, um, I can always dab it up. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to use another edge. Let's use this one. And this time, really make sure that I'm not really getting it bleed. So dry, clean my brush, my flat brush and dry it and pick up uh, red, maybe magenta, but make sure that it's dry paint. Okay, so from the top, pull it down. So that is really dry. Okay, pick up some orange, go into that, mix it a little bit. yellow there and get some bright green. There we go. Okay, so that's using boundaries. Okay, now turn it right side up. Okay, so let's fix that a little bit. Um, not too much. 
So I'm going to use this uh, round brush, go in with the sienna brown and kind of pull. I like that texture there, so I'm just pulling, connecting the line, and that's it. Okay. Uh, right here, it looked too flat. So I'm going to mix in a little bit of um, gray. So I'm just tapping it in. And don't worry. Uh, so dry my brush, pound it in. So you're creating this kind of rocky textures, rough, not, but it's still maintaining that color. So right here, I want a little brighter orange. So I'm going to pick up the orange and just kind of trace over the tip. So it looks stand out more. Okay. So I can leave it like this. Oh, I can add a little kind of gray misty um, in this valley area. So I'll use black, but um, very dark, not very light. So dilute it down with water and kind of okay. There we go. That's a white dot. I don't like. So let's just scrub it, just blending it in. Okay, so that's number one with boundary. Let's do another one, but this one, I want to show you how to do a um, night nice scene. Okay, so we'll add uh, salt to the sky. Okay, I'm going to clean, use clean brush, oops. My brush is not clean, so fine. And wipe off the excess water, get it back and forth. Okay, because I'm going to use dark color. So wet, wet my brush a little bit, pick up um, purple and blue a lot, and kind of dab it, tap it down. You, you see previous painting, when I do circular motion, so this one is kind of like that, but like floating on a cloud at nighttime. The other blue. So allow the water to work. See, I just tap it and the water just move the paint for me. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so I have here some table salt, very little, like tiny bit, not too much, like a few grain, just like, like this, that much, and sprinkle it back and forth, and let it, it when it dry, it will show itself. Okay, so remember, we always, um, blur the edge. So I'm scrubbing the edge a little bit. And I'm using the paper towel to go in and pick up excess water, but I'm also kind of like take away that straight line across. Okay. So wait for it to dry a little bit, fanning it, and then I'll decide what the different edges that I want to do. So I have some other edges that I re really like. So let's see. Where did I put that? I have some here. I have a few, so as you can see. Here we go. Okay, so this one, okay, let's use this one. Uh, 
Okay. This time we're really dark. So between dark brown and black, pick up a lot of paint. So pull down. Add some midnight blue to that purple. Okay, make sure you pull down. There we go. Okay, clean my brush. And using the edge of this to scrub. So make the line across. And this will create a misty effect of the, the painting, the valley later on. So because the, the color is black and I don't want it, so I'm using paper towel, it's drying quickly. So I'm just kind of gently go in. So it's dry quick and pick up. Okay, I like it like that, so I'm gonna leave it. And then we'll use another edge. Let's see which one. one okay again dark color maybe purple and blue only this time and I think because of the height of the mountain this time some blue I'm going to just do two row and I'm pulling it toward the bottom and leaving some white space so then I can scrub there we go okay clean my brush okay again go in and scrub so Probably a little blue purple, just so that right here, light, very light. And I'm kind of scrub. A little bit more, kind of make it look mix misty a little bit. This is dry brush, just a damp dry br dry brush. Okay. See. Okay. So now, I can have the option of putting a moon in. So what I do is really clean my brush and have a little water so i'll go in here and scrub around and dab it up okay wipe my brush go in and scrub some more Okay, it's not as round as I want it to be, but it's a dark night, so let it dry, and then I'm going to have kind of a purple cloud, like floating across the moon, right there. So I kind of take care of rounding it. See, this is right here. That's the effect of the salt. 
Okay. Um, try it with different combination. So anyway, you see today's project, we did it to this one with three rows and then this one with two rows, um, different color combination. I have other example that I can show um, like this one. So um, have fun with this, like do different combination of colors. Alrighty, see you next week.